Welcome to Gammon Theological Seminary's 138th Founders Day and Thurkill Jones Lectures. Navigating Next, equipping leaders for their next season in ministry. I'm Reverend Donald Reed, the senior pastor of the Andrews Chapel United Methodist Church in Jonesboro and the chair of our Founders Day Steering Committee. It's an honor to be with you here today. What an incredible opportunity we have here to grow and worship together. Though we may be fatigued with virtual events, we are so thankful for the opportunity to share this powerful day with you in a safe and personal virtual space. We'd love for you to connect with us on social media using the hashtag NavigatingNext. Why not share a photo on Instagram of who you're watching today's event with or tweet a meaningful takeaway from a talk. Just remember to use our hashtag. Also, make sure that you're following Gammon on social media for shareable quotes, interactive questions, and more. Our hope today is to refresh you, engage and equip you in the mission, and celebrate the impact of Gammon Theological Seminary. Throughout the day, you're going to be inspired by testimonies from students, alumni, and staff. You'll hear about the difference they're making in the world and find hope in our future leaders and have an opportunity to be a part of that future. But we'll talk more about that later. During our workshops, you'll hear from renowned leaders about the most pressing challenges and vital opportunities of ministry in the coming years. This is going to be an exciting time. I can't wait to share this virtual space with you. To start the morning off, we're going to first spend some time in worship together. No matter where you find yourself excited or disheartened, energized or weary, our first response ought to always be to worship. As we look ahead and try to discern and prepare for what's next, we constantly pause and look to God and remember the one who is always with us, before us, and guiding us. We have been invited to follow and trust him first. So feel free to express yourself in worship. Prepare your space and prepare your heart and let's worship together and find refreshment in this community experience. Let's do it. God's your Lord of the harvest and we thank you that we're going to receive a harvest. If you feel it, stand on your feet. Let's go at it together. We've come to worship, we've come to praise, give God all he's due for another Thanksgiving week. I'm thankful every week, yep. Yeah? Come on, clap those hands like this, come on. Yeah, that song says this. You're Lord of the harvest, and we worship you, we worship you this day. You're Lord of the harvest, and we worship you. Everybody lift it up and sing. You're Lord of the harvest. Come on, y'all sing with us. And we worship you, we worship you. Oh, this you know. You're Lord of the harvest, and we worship you. Let's go right here. Yeah. Turn, on Lord. Turn on Lord. Yeah, remains the same. Age to age. Yeah, you got it. Come on, say. All with all our love. And with all our And we worship you, worship you this day. Say, Lord of the harvest. Sing y'all. And we worship you, we worship you. Sing it again, you Lord. You're Lord of the harvest. And we worship you. We worship you, we worship you. One more time, you Lord. You're Lord of the harvest. And we worship you. We worship you. That's it, let's go. Turn on. Say, hey.
you're Lord of the harvest, hey, and we worship you, we worship you this day. You're Lord of the harvest, say, and we worship you, we worship you. Say, you are, you are my daily, daily bread. Draw near to worship Christ the Lord and bless his name, his holy name, declaring he is the Lord. Come bless the Lord, sing with us. Bless the Lord, draw near to worship Christ in us and bless his name, his holy name, declaring he is the Lord of me. And be glad in this day he made. Come bless the Lord. Come bless the Lord. Hey. Come bless the Lord. Hey. Draw near to worship. And bless the Lord. his name. And bless his name. His holy name. Declare. Hey. Oh, that men will praise him. Oh, that men will praise him. Hands. Come on, it's one line. Everybody's gonna say it. Say all oh, that men say. All oh, that men would praise his name. Praise his name. Praise his name. Till to the end of the earth. All oh. oh, that men huh? praise his name. Praise his name. Praise his name. To the end of the earth. All oh, that men. All oh, that men oh. praise his name. Praise his name. Praise his name. To the ends of the earth. Let's go. And again, and again I say, can I say, oh, that men, oh, that men would praise his, praise his name, praise his name to the end of the oh, earth. Oh, that men would praise his name, praise his name, praise his name, his name to the ends of the earth. Oh, oh that men would praise his name, hey. praise his name hey. to the ends of the earth. Let's go. And again, and again, I again, I say.
Hallelujah. Come on, let's sing this. The song says this. Oh, 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 oh. I'm grateful.
us, Lord. I'm grateful. <laughs> Can't nobody sing it for you like you can sing it. Come on, lift it up. Say, ho, oh, oh, oh. That's it, saints. Yeah, come on, sing it together. Say, ho, oh, oh, oh. I'm grateful. I hear you. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Whatever your tone is, come on, sing it. It sounds good to him. Say, ho, oh, oh, oh. Yes, Lord, ho, oh, 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 I am grateful. Yes, God, yes, I am, yes, I am. One more time, say, ho, oh, say, ho, oh, oh, oh. I am grateful. Amen, amen, and thank you, Impact Worship Group. Now, let's get started. You're about to hear from Dean Dr. Candace Lewis as she sets our vision for today. Dr. Candace Lewis is an ordained elder in the Florida Conference of the United Methodist Church. From 1997 to 2009, Dr. Lewis was appointed as the founding pastor of the New Life Community United Methodist Church in Jacksonville, Florida. She was then appointed as the Associate General Secretary in the New Church Starts Division and later as the Executive Director of Path One New Church Starts at the General Board of Discipleship in Nashville, Tennessee. She comes to Gammon after serving as a district superintendent for four years in the Florida Conference. She is a graduate of the University of Florida and Gammon Theological Seminary at ITC, where she received her Master of Divinity degree in May 1996. In June 2000, she graduated from the Harvard Divinity School's Summer Leadership Institute on Faith-Based Community Economic Development. She earned a doctorate in ministry in church leadership excellence from Wesley Theological Seminary in Washington, D.C. in May of 2014. Now you will hear from our leader, Dean Dr. Candace Lewis. Let's welcome her. Our scripture today comes from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Hear now the word of the Lord. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin that clings so closely to us. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, <clears throat> disregarding the shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners so that you may not grow weary and lose heart. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Eternal God, we're grateful for this day and for this opportunity to celebrate 138 years with Gammon Theological Seminary. God, we're grateful for our past, our present, and the bright future that you have in store for us. Bless our time together, not only this service, but throughout this day. And I offer this prayer in Jesus' name that all God's people say together, amen. To Bishop Jonathan Holston, the chair of our Board of Trustees. To President Matthew Wesley Williams, president of the ITC. To our deans, faculty, staff, both at Gammon and at the Interdenominational Theological Seminary. To Gammon's Board of Trustees, alumni, current students at Gammon and the ITC, students and friends of Gammon, we welcome you to our 138th Virtual Founders Day celebration. Our theme is Navigating Next. A special shout out to Pastor Olu Brown, a Gammon graduate and a distinguished alumni for hosting us here today at the Impact Church. 
I am the Reverend Dr. Candace M. Lewis, and I have the privilege of being the 17th president and dean of Gammon Theological Seminary, and I am the first woman that's been elected to this role in the school's 138-year history. I hear glass breaking everywhere. The title of this message is simply called Continue to Run Your Race. I became interested in running, and as people who know me closely would say, maybe jogging and walking, uh, when I received my first pastoral appointment back in 1996. I was a recent Gammon graduate, and I moved to Jacksonville, Florida. And my first pastoral appointment by Bishop Cornelius Linton Henderson was to start a new church. I never had any training in church planting. I never read a book about church planting, but that was my first appointment. I was told to move to Jacksonville, Florida. And when I moved to Jacksonville, I only knew two people in the whole city and neither one of them decided to join the church. So when I tell you we grew a church from scratch, we grew a church from scratch. And it was really a lot of hard work. But nevertheless, I lived near a community college and every day, when I would go to the track, and it was a particular track that had four laps around it, and the track was actually very well marked uh, that let you know every time you reach your milestone or whatever your goal was for that particular day. And at that track, I would go regularly, and I would find myself looking at those marks, trying to understand how much progress that I was making. And this one particular day, when I was out walking the track, I heard the Spirit nudge me and said, Candace, when you learn how to run a mile, you'll be able to do anything. Because in running that first mile nonstop, four laps around that track, it'll give you this new courage and this new burst of, of, of insight and, and, and ideas that you just hadn't had in a while. Keep pressing toward the mark and keep running until you reach the goal. There will be days when I will go around that track and I would just be exhausted, sometimes making one lap, sometimes making two, sometimes maybe making three and a half laps. But the day that I made that fourth lap, even though the stadium was empty, I felt like I was surrounded by this cloud of witnesses that was cheering me on that day. And when I looked around, even though the stands were empty, I knew that I was surrounded. Our scripture today comes from Hebrews chapter 12, verse number one, and it says, therefore, since we are surrounded by this cloud of witnesses, can I share with you a little bit about Gammon's history so that we can understand how we too are surrounded by this cloud of witnesses? This is Gammon's 138th year. Gammon Seminary is one of 13 United Methodist seminaries, yet we are the only historically black theological institution for our entire denomination. In 1883 is when Gammon was started. And from 1883 to 1958, Gammon operated for 75 years as an independent seminary that was birthed on the campus of Clark College in South Atlanta. President Harry V. Richardson was a president of Gammon at the time in 1958, and he also became the first president of the ITC. So from 1958 to the present, Gammon has been a part of the Interdenominational Theological Seminary, which is a constituency of six different seminaries, Morehouse School of Religion, Turner Theological Seminary, Phillips School of Theology, C.H. Mason, Seminary and Harry V. Richardson Fellowship. Statistically, Gammon alone has graduated over 2,000 graduates in our 138 year history. Remember, we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. And Gammon has been educating, training, pro and raising up prophetic leaders since 1883. Come on, friends, let me break it down a little bit for you. From 1890 to 1938, after slavery had ended, reconstruction was happening, Jim Crow segregation was going on, there was people fighting for black dignity, fighting for racial justice in America. Gammon continued to train, recruit, educate, and raise up prophetic leaders to serve the United Methodist denomination. In 1939, when the United Methodist Church uh, South merged with the United Methodist Church and they created this central jurisdiction. Instead of leaning into uh, this opportunity, instead they created a segregated group 
of uh, they, they created a segregated organization that would house all of the black churches in that time. And you would think that would have created a time of, of, of deep turmoil and deep struggle. And even though that happened, Gammon at that time continued to recruit, train, educate, and graduate prophetic leaders to serve our denomination. From 1939 to 1968, that was when the central jurisdiction existed. And blacks in the United Methodist Church, they were fighting for civil rights in America. They were fighting for their civil rights within the Methodist Episcopal Church and Gammon throughout that entire time continued to recruit, train up, educate, raise, and graduate prophetic leaders to serve this United Methodist Church and their communities and this entire United States. In 1968, when the United Methodist Church merged together, Gammon was still educating, training, raising up, recruiting, deploying, prophetic leaders to serve this denomination in communities across the United States. I don't hear nobody. From 1968 to 1985, while the black consciousness generation was rising up and Generation X, Gammon continued to graduate leaders that would lead congregations in every community across the United States. Gammon graduates led large churches. I don't hear nobody. Gammon's graduates raised up mega churches. They served big churches, medium-sized churches, small churches, and rural churches because Gammon was committed to recruiting, educating, training, raising up prophetic leaders to serve not only through the United Methodist Church, but in every community community across this connection. And from 1986 to 2014, Gammon Seminary continued to educate, train, equip, and raise up prophetic leaders for every generation. And in 2014, when Mike Brown was killed in Ferguson and the Black Lives Matter movement was born, guess who was still on the scene? I don't hear nobody. Raising up, recruiting, training up prophetic leaders to serve not only the civil rights generation, the Gen X generation, now black millennials are coming to Gammon Theological Seminary because they want to be educated, they want to be trained, they want to be recruited, and they want to go out and serve and be prophetic leaders in their community. And from 19 and from 2015 to 2020, Gammon continues with this same mission, recruiting, educating, training up, raising up and then deploying prophetic leaders to serve in their local communities and to impact the entire denomination and this, the, the cities and the country and across America and even the world. And in 2020, pre-pandemic, Dr. Joseph Crawford faithfully and courageously accepted the role of interim president dean and served Gammon Theological Seminary in the midst of a pandemic. And if, if, and if things were gonna be tough, they were tough, as you know, navigating this pandemic. But ah, Gammon continued to live on. Even in the midst of the pandemic, we recruited, educated, trained up, raised up, and deployed prophetic leaders to serve and speak in the midst of this, this same time. And in case you have never heard Gammon's roll call, and in case you're not convinced yet that we're surrounded by a cloud of witnesses, let me walk you through this quickly. Our first president, President William Thurkill, he graduated 13 classes. Our second president, Silas Ellsworth Eidelman graduated six classes. Our third president, who was the first African-American to serve Gamma Theological Seminary, John Wesley E. Bowen, he served five graduating classes. Our fourth president, President Philip Waters, graduated nine classes of Gamma graduates. Our fifth president, George Trevor, he graduated three classes. Our sixth president, Franklin Clapp, he graduated five classes. Ha, ah, and then came President Willis J. King. You know that name. If you lived in the Willis J. King, Willis J. King building, you know that building. President Willis J. King, the seventh president of Gammon, served 11 classes and graduated 11 classes, followed by John Haywood, who was the eighth president of Gammon Theological Seminary. He graduated five classes. And then came in 1948, President Harry Van Buren Richardson. He graduated 12 classes. And then his leadership, among others, created the entire interdenominational theological center. Again, ITC had roots in Gammon, was born out of Gammon, but it was never just about Gammon. It was about Gammon seeding itself to become something bigger and greater that exists today. 
and the 10th president of Gammon Theological Seminary, Julius Wynn. He served six classes. And here comes Major Jones, the 11th president and dean of Gammon Theological Seminary. Come on, type in the chat if you, if Major Jones was your dean. President Major Jones was at Gammon from 1967 to 1985. He graduated 19 classes of seminarians. He raised up 19 classes of prophetic leaders, many who are still leading the church today. Oh, but after Major Jones, President Alfred, Bishop Alfred L. Norris took up the mantle and he graduated seven classes. And then came Bishop Cornelius Henderson, my bishop, from 1993 to 1996, and he graduated four classes. And then the 14th president, President Walter McKelvey, held the light, held the reins, led the seminary strongly for 14 classes. And then in 2011, Dr. Albert Mosley came and led set and graduated seven classes. And then the 16th president, President Ken Walton, graduated three classes. And today I stand before you as the 17th president and dean of the Gammon Theological Seminary. And we will raise up money. And we will help students in this season overcome the biggest barrier that our students have. It costs $10,164 to attend Gammon Seminary per semester. That's much more than what you paid when you attended Gammon. Yet Gammon is still committed to the mission that it had in 1883 to recruit, to educate, to train, and to raise up and to deploy prophetic leaders for this generation. Not the civil rights generation, but this generation. We're called, as Charles Wesley said, to serve this present age, our calling to fulfill. Oh, may it all my powers engage to do my master's will. Oh, we're committed to raising millions of dollars in this season of Gamma Theological Seminary. We want to be able to offer our students full scholarships so they can hear the call, they can answer the call, and they can go out in the community to be deployed in mission and ministry for this time and for this season. Won't you do this with us? Won't you join this call? Won't you run this race with Gammon still at this time and in this season? The scripture says, let us also lay aside every weight and sin that so closely clings to us. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who, in, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and is now taking his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners so that we may not grow weary in well-doing. That scripture says, let us lay aside every weight and sin that so easily clings to us. I'm sure we could all use this part of the scripture and exegete all of our personal sins and personal weights that we've been struggling with. But can I take a moment just to talk about the collective weight and the collective sin that needs to be addressed today? Can we talk about the collective sin and weight of sexism and racism and homophobism and transphobism and all these other isms and classism that, that, that continue to weigh people down at this time and at this season? These are waste and sins that are prevailing in the United Methodist Church right now. We're able to name it publicly, white supremacy, white privilege, a systemic racism. These are the weights and sins that are weighing us down that we need to continue to lay aside prevailing sins like police brutality and this unjust justice system that we have to navigate every day. I mean, we're all trying to wrap our minds around how a 17 year old can walk in cross state lines with an assault rifle and, 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 and be acquitted. And then we watch the 17 year old have Skittles in his hand and a hoodie on his head. And he's shot and killed by a vigilante that still got off. Somebody make it make sense to us. It doesn't make sense. So the purpose of Gammon is still clear. We have to recruit, train up, raise up prophetic leaders that will go out into these communities, that will speak truth to power, that will not be afraid, that will show up as black pastors 
in Brunswick, Georgia. Thank you, pastors who showed up there, because how can a district attorney say it's too many black pastors in the room? It's intimidating to the jury. No, these were gammon pastors that took the day off, that went to Brunswick, Georgia, and not just gammon pastors, lots of pastors showed up there. But thank you for the gammon grads that I saw on the scene on that way. And again, even in the midst of all these sins and weights, I am grateful today for the bishops in the United Methodist Church and the leaders in the United Methodist Church that are engaging in the work of anti-racism, addressing how these inequities have impacted black leaders and black congregations for centuries now. They're addressing them, trying to right the wrongs, create some reparations so that we can be healed and so that we can be free. But here's what the scripture reminds us, that we have to look unto Jesus. You gotta make sure you can see Jesus, friends. In the midst of everything that's going on, my vision gets cloudy. I'm sure your vision gets cloudy. But we gotta make sure we can see Jesus. We gotta see Jesus' life. We gotta hear his words. We gotta see Jesus' practices. We gotta see how Jesus lived, who he loved, how he accepted those that society would want to not, society would just want to purely reject. Jesus continues to be the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. And the scripture says, for the joy that was set before him. Friends, I hope you still see the joy that is set before you. And I know this has been an extremely tough season. Nobody thought that come March 20, 2020, that you went from a sanctuary full of people. I don't know if you can look around, but we're preaching to an empty sanctuary outside of a few friends and some amazing camera people. But this is the season that we're in. This is the season of the church. We didn't see it coming. You might not feel like you were trained and prepared for it, but that's what this conference is about, navigating next. We are here, Gammon Theological Seminary, still on the scene, 138 years later, getting ready to experience a, a resurgence of sorts, a comeback of sorts. I mean, you've not seen anything yet for the future of Gammon Theological Seminary. So I just wanna speak life into you today. I know it's been a tough season, we're here to help you. We want to equip you. We want to partner with you in this mission and this ministry. We want to partner with our graduates. We want to partner with friends of Gammon. We want to partner with constituent seminary friends. We are just here to help. We're committed to this mission. We got 138 years in training, equipping, recruiting, educating, deploying, prophetic leaders for mission and ministry in this world today. Preparation, participation, perseverance. You know, I actually ran my first half marathon a few years ago. And, you know, I got off to a great start, like uh, miles three through four, they were easy. I mean, I was just running and just like, oh my God, this is gonna be easy. And about mile six or seven, it really got tough. The terrain changed. It was very unexpected. The hills were pretty high and the valleys were pretty steep. We started going around in these neighborhoods that I'd never seen before. And literally by the time I was at mile eight or nine, I wanted to quit. But I didn't realize you could take a break in the midst of a marathon, half marathon. I haven't run a full marathon yet, but I did a half marathon. So in the midst of about mile eight or nine, I was able to take a break and kind of catch my breath. And then, and then by the time I got to mile 10 or 11, I found that there were other people that were also struggling to finish the race, just like I was struggling to finish the race. But you know what we decided to do? We were gonna finish the race together. And then by the time I got to mile 12, I could see my family and friends in the distance. Come on, somebody. They, and then I could see the onlookers all around. And by the time I got to mile 13, and the half marathon is only 13.5 miles, I realized that I was surrounded by a cloud of witnesses and they were cheering us on. And I I decided at that point I was going to continue my race. And not only was I going to continue my race, I was going to get my stride. And I started jogging like I've been jogging good the whole time. Listen, friends, no matter how you get there, take a break when you need to take a break. Make sure you're not running this race by yourself. Make sure you got some friends that are surrounding you. Make sure you get some rest when you're tired, some water when you're thirsty. Make sure you just commit to finishing your race. You too can finish your race because you're not in this race alone. Be encouraged, be refreshed as you navigate all that God has for us next. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
For over six decades, the Interdenominational Theological Center has been preparing leaders for and in the black church to serve the church and the broader community. Our mission is to educate women and men who practice justice and peace through a liberating and transforming spirituality to become leaders in the church, in local and global communities. ITC is now in the process of institutional innovation that we commonly call ITC 2.0. While the world is different than it was at ITC's founding, ITC's educational process, educational delivery, and educational outcomes must also be different. ITC 2.0 reinterprets our historic mission as an institutional intention to cultivate women and men who are prophetic problem solvers who follow in the way of Jesus, not just to speak truth to power, but who are able to co-create alternative systems to the status quo that address the flesh and blood needs of God's people. Prophetic problem solvers are facilitators, godly choreographers, who work with and within communities to co-create solutions that are needed for the on-the-ground issues that communities and congregations face. This is a moment that calls for the kinds of leaders that are not standing back on the sidelines and watching the world go by, but the kind of leaders who know how to get into the thick of things, guided by the gospel, grounded in faith, faithful to their forebearers, guidance and direction, working with communities to ensure that all God's people have access to the abundant life that Christ promised us. The rampant upheaval and turmoil in our world, in our society, and even in our church has created as much of an opportunity as it has a challenge for us to face. So we're grateful to be in partnership with Gammon Theological Seminary, School of the Prophets at the ITC, to cultivate the kind of leaders that our communities need now. So we invite you to engage with Gammon Theological Seminary, to attend and enroll in the ITC, to discern a future with hope, to become the kind of leaders that our communities and our congregations need to bring into being the kingdom of God, the beloved community. And if you're considering attending the Interdenominational Theological Center at Gammon Theological Seminary, we look forward to welcoming you on campus, virtually and or in person, that we might prepare together and discern together our way forward in advancing the gospel and service to God's people. I loved hearing about where Gammon has been, where we are now, and where we are going from Dr. Lewis. It makes me so excited for what is coming next. And today, we'll be equipping you with how to navigate getting there. Don't forget to share your takeaways on social media using the hashtag NavigatingNext. In just a few minutes, Dr. Donald Reed is going to introduce our very exciting special guest. But before we get to that, we'll hear from a current Gammon student to share their experience here. My name is Nicholas Petty and I will be graduating in May of 2022 with the Master of Divinity and Master of Arts in Liturgical Arts and Culture dual degree. Gammon Theological Seminary is very unique historically. It is actually the only historically black seminary related to the United Methodist Church. And I think that's very special because the United Methodist Church has a very rich history of overcoming racism. And to be a part of an institution that is very strategic and intentional about making sure that the, the life, the culture, and the thriving of black people and black culture is is within the United Methodist Church, I think it's a unique honor to be a part of that tradition and legacy. So my matriculation here at Gammon Theological Seminary has been wrought with challenges, which is the intention. Uh, my theology has been um, shaped and has evolved significantly. I was able to see the uniqueness of my personhood, not just as a Christian, not just as a black man, but as an artist. And Gammon Theological Seminary has helped me to live through those challenges 
um, and has helped me to produce solutions even throughout those challenges. Gammon has equipped me in my calling to this ministry uniquely because of the focus of my dual degree program. Gammon has given me the theological language for me to be able to articulate that call. It has given me the understanding and the confidence to be able to harness my creative gifts and to ultimately connect them with the divine. My ministry, I would say, has been shaped and has also been um, discovered through my experience here at Gammon Theological Seminary.